guys welcome back to the channel today we're looking at a dinky johnson's road sweeper now this one it's the it's not too bad there's a few scratches on it the doors are all right they're both working but the passenger door as you can see has got a bit of damage so we've had to uh, get a replacement for this one um other than that it's basically just the belt that's um the belt's missing underneath the little drive spring that drives the wheels and the brushes and all the moving parts here. But um, people who want this, you can either get it from the model shops and what have you and the websites, but with lockdown, I had a bit of issues getting it. So one of the other restorers put me on to getting it from a steam engine and um, it worked out, I ended up getting two. So uh, Martin Dares, needed one for his so i passed him one on so he could like crack on with his build as well so it's only fair people would help me out so you know return the favor to other people in need the way it works so anyway let, let's uh let's crack this open and see what we've got inside see what we've got to deal with so it's easy this one it's just a couple of screws on the front we can just whip them out no drilling required yet so we just pop out that little screw in this one and then the cab should fall off that's easy enough just set that aside for a moment and then we'll just undo the other couple of screws here which are holding on the brush for the side the first motorized part the screwdriver's alive keeps flying out my hand That little screw out there, here we go. And that'll bring this little um little brush out. So there's the, the brush from underneath, which connects to it by via a little cog. We just take the bottom off. Well really the what what would you call this? The um the vacuum dust collector unit, I don't know. Anyway. I'm just going to prise the wheel off here. It's the only way you can get them off is just pull them off, but they're quite tight. They've got like on the end of the axle, there's like a little there, uh, there's like teeth. And um, as you push the wheel onto the axle, it they, they bind together and grip. So I'm just going to like, it looks a bit forceful, but it actually isn't. So I'm just going to prise the wheels off. I so said they're quite a tight little snug fit actually. So. There we go. Okay. I can't actually pull the axle through there because there's a cog in the center of the axle which uh, the spring connects to, which drives the belt and all, all the little bits and bobs. So I'll just take off here what I can. And then I'll, um, I'll, I'll show you how it all works and how it goes back and what What's what? Let's give that a little, uh, little bit of persuasion. There we go. Just do the same with the other axle, get this wheel off. So again, I'm just going to prise it. There you go, that one popped out. And as there's no cog, this one came out pretty easy, just standard really. Just gonna um, hold the axle with the pliers as like 
try and get this wheel off the other side. Off the other back, there we go. And the, the idea behind this was I thought like if we could pull it through and then sort of lift it up, it'd pop out, but nope. I didn't really want to mess with these cogs as well with the alignment, you know, with the, like being one on each pin. I didn't really want to mess about with like everything when the spring goes back on, so the idea was to leave them alone. But uh, you'll see in a while, when I put it in caustic to clean all the paint off the base, um, whatever was holding them in place, all the grime and shite and what have you, the caustic chewed through it, so the little cogs just, they fell off the axle, to be honest. So I had to, um, to realign them and line them up and just put a bit of glue on and what have you. And they, they're all fine, they, they fell back into place pretty easy. So it wasn't a problem, I, I was panicking over it, to be honest, I thought I was going to knock everything out of sync, but... It wasn't an issue. So if anyone's ever going to do one of these, it, it's quite easy to take off them cogs off the axle and just line them up by eye, really. It doesn't have any effect. Anyway, I'll get the spring out and just show you. When you get these springs, they, they come really long and they're in a loop. And then what you've got to do is you've got to find the connection point and you can see it as you like. You just basically pull them apart. And at one end, it's got like a female end and at the other side, the male end, which is a little bit thinner. And all you do basically is you keep hold of the male end, find the length you need, chop it, and then basically just join the loop again. And that's what I've done here to form this spring. <clears throat> so I've ended up at like three quarters as a spare. So that's why I was I was able to pass on another one because this piece that I got, it lasts like it'll last about another say two models possibly. So I was quite pleased with it. So you go. I've just like fitted it in on the. Um, on the cogs there, on the axles. And I'm just going to like test fit it now. I'll just put the, place these in and just check that it actually does fit properly and I've cut it to the right length. What a genius little idea. I did actually like have an elastic band in idea. In case I couldn't get the spring, I was just going to fit an elastic band on. But it did work. But I, I, I wanted everything right. I wanted the proper stuff in it. You know, if I was going to do the restoration, I wanted all the parts proper. So there you go, see as it just sits in around the axles and then when you put the little brushes in and the side brush, there's another cog on that. And as you twist it round it, it just it's like a little clockwork. It just moves everything round and um as you push the vehicle along. It's quite a clever little idea actually. As I say, this came off a model train. I'm not into trains myself, but so that was down to um crap old Nick from Jersey. You wanna check his channel out, he does some really good stuff as well. He um he put me onto that, so fair play to him. So we'll just put that to one side so we don't lose it. We've got all them off, all them bits off. What else have we got to do? Let's have a look at the cab. Right, so we just pop out the interior. Just open the doors and that should fall out easy enough. There we go. So the interior's out. It's quite clean. And the doors lift, basically just lift out. So that door's fine. It's this one was the issue. So the broken window at the top as you can see so um paul from pimp my diecast was kind enough to send me a door along with nick from crap old nick's restorations so i'll pop his uh, there we go okay you want to go and check out them two channels guys these, these two guys are brilliant lovely lovely people they're there to help out anything you need and they do some fantastic work so go and check them out guys as I say, I couldn't have done this model without either of them, so I appreciate them for the help for there. So cheers, guys. Anyway, let's, let's crack on. So I've just got the window unit up. It's a bit broken, so I'm going to have to fabricate a new one for that. So it's basically time to strip the paint off. So let's get into some caustic. So here we go, we just pour in the boiling water. 
and as always guys make sure you wear your um, protective gear ventilated room if you've got an extractor fan perfect use that as well get rid of the fumes be careful with this stuff show some respect it can do your skin harm closing your eyes you know seek medical advice but wear goggles and you know the drill so there's the cost that we're just going to tip it in And I'm sorry for this really, really rubbish, terrible angle, but my phone wouldn't clip onto the stand for some reason, and it kept falling off, and I was scared of it going into the caustic, so I had to do sort of juggle it. And I wasn't actually going to film it, but I just thought I'd, I'd try and do my best with it, so I apologise for the rear, the rubbish camera angle here. So I'm just sprinkling a little touch more, just to make it a little bit more stronger solution, because it, it's, it's old paint, and sometimes it's a bit tough to get off. So there we go, so we just work it in and just, just see how we get along with it for a little while, see if it's going to start to take. Oops, that's a really bad angle, this. As you can see, the fizz in there in the water, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's all great, it's working fine. The fizz you can see there is the caustic eating away at the... the um, the glue or whatever was keeping on them two cogs on the axles and I, I was unaware at this time but that's what was happening with the fizzing and that's what caused the two cogs to slip off the axles because there was there was no more anything there to keep the adhesion going you know so anyway the, the, the paint's starting to come off now so you can see, yeah, see the little fizzing again in the middle yeah it's, it's starting to work now it's starting to take it off so we should have no problems with this one. Should be okay. I say I feel a bit like uh, clumsy with this, but because I say I'm holding the camera in one hand and the, trying to scrub off with the other, so that's why it seems a little bit clumsy. So what what I'll do now is I'll just put the camera down and what have you, and I'll do this off camera and then I'll bring it back and show you in a little while. But I'll just um I'll leave it running for a little while just to show you. But then next time you see it, it'll be on the bench all done. Right, so what I've done here, as you can see on the front of the window, there was like a, it was as if somebody had pushed something against the glass, and it was like a, a like a dimple, and it cracked. So you could feel like a little bump here, and I wasn't happy because I thought no matter how much I sand this out, it, it's not going to be right. So this the morning that this was filmed, I bought myself a base of a flan to to make a cake, and it was like a circular dish, and I was looking at it, and I thought. That's going to be actually ideal fit because it had the front contours, it had the roof, and it went down at the back. And I thought, this is absolutely fantastic, so why not use it? So I'm just going to cut a piece out and um, measure it up and see, see how we go, see if it works. But as you can see, it, it's perfect. So that, that, see, all one piece, absolutely fantastic. It's just a little bit of cutting here, there, and we're away. As the doors open on the vehicle, there's no glass needed for the door, so it's just the front, top and back. So I'll just, like, roughly cut it out. 
mark it up a little touch and then once I've got like the main piece out then I can shape it more detailed then it'll fit perfect so yeah that just goes to show you don't throw any plastics away because if you're into rest restorations it saves you an absolute fortune and time just like having a go yourself if you make a mistake and it don't work what's it cost you throw it away start again even if you have to do it in pieces and glue them together then so be it <clears throat> but if you if you do have a look around you, you you do start to see the shapes of different things in like rubbish knocking about around your house and you think i'll keep hold of that the wife thinks i'm some sort of hoarder i've got like a big box full of little bits of plastics off this that and the other and containers and different jars and everything of plastics i keep them all because so as you say you, you never know what you're going to need to in this hobby and you can more or less scratch build anything from anything so just just keep hold of it put it away somewhere and you will use it so it's just a case now of just getting the shape getting the correct size cutting it and you can see from there just on the bench it is very similar now so I'm just going to get the cab, just going to like place it in, test fit it, and then just snip it down into shape. Just take a little bit off the end there. Sorry about the camera shot here. I'm blind as a bloody bat, so I've, I've got to like put it close to my face so I can actually see where I'm coming. It's, um, it's fitting in there quite nice now. I'll show you. I will show you now. Sorry for the angles. It's just there you go. See it's. It's absolutely perfect just a little bit more tweaking and then even the backs filled in nice back went back screen i've just got to do a little bit more tidying up for the post there and then it's it's ready to be put in that's perfect so who knew eh? a cake base cover you can use as a windscreen <laughs> i'll just trim this off a little bit more Try it again. Here we go. Perfect. Perfect. So here's everything after to come out the caustic. We've got the two doors, we've got the cab, nice detail on the front, Just a little bit of detail on the back as well, it's not too bad. And we've got like the base, basically nothing there, but then we've got like the, um, I don't even know what to call this part. So, the two doors. You know, let you have a closer look. There's just some cracking detail on the front of this model in it. Look, look at the detail. All the emblems, the, the wording, fantastic. See, for a little model, they, they really have gone, gone to town on this one. It's absolutely fantastic. I, and I love these Ford trucks as well, they're brilliant. I love them. So we're uh, send it to paint now, it should be ready to put some paint on. So we're going to start off with the cab. And I had to mix these colours up here. I used the Vallejo red and the yellow. And basically just mixed them up to the got as close as I could. And then just started to like apply thin coats. And just built it up slowly. Tap coat and let it dry. A little bit more and let it dry and then so on and so on. Let it build up slowly over time. Don't be, don't rush your work, take your time. See, it's going on quite nice. 
only problem with doing the separate from the doors is getting the, the right shape. Make sure whatever the layers and you put on this bit to do your doors at the same time best you can and hold them next to each other, you know. Even if you have to count how many layers you're putting on and coats, just to keep them even. Otherwise, when you come to put the doors on, you're going to have like different shades and it's going to look a bit stupid and you'll have to do it again. So always remember, if you've taken the doors off or bonnets or boots or whatever off the vehicle, just um, do them at the same time. So I've actually got them set aside. So I, I haven't done them. It's just I haven't put them in this shot. But it was drying for about an hour there, so I'll just like come back and I'll put the next layer on. You see there, it's just spilling it around, spraying it nice and even, just building it up nice. I want to put a nice thick coat on this, but not too thick to, enough to like hide any detail, but enough so that it can take a knock, you know. I don't want it to be chipped so easy that it's like, you didn't touch it. But at the same time, you know, I'm trying to preserve the details as well. So it's a fine balance, it's just getting it right. Yeah, so um, I was having a few issues with the airbrush there, it was, it was clogging up and splattering and spitting and this, that and that, so I just had to stop and give it a little clean up. Seems to be working out, it's still not perfect, it's, I need to do something to it, but it is a bit better. So I'm just going to carry on with the cab. And the, the colour actually turns out quite well on this, I'm quite pleased with the colour match. Again, I mixed up the colours with uh, the light hole. And um, we matched this up as well quite well, actually. Took a couple of goes to get it right. And so we're just going to give it a nice little leave a few coats. Put tack coat on it first, let that dry off like we did the cab. Get a nice even coverage. And as you can see, there are the colours I used to make the green. Overlay all colours. I can't exactly remember the exact. Coloured names, but it was the basic, it was just blues and what have you, you know. 
I can't remember all these posh names that they give different shades of blue and different shades of white. It's, it's just blue and white to me. You can see inside there that the different coloured patches where I was testing the colour mixing and seeing if the nearest to it. But in, in the end, we, we got a good enough match. I'm happy with the match. I think it turns out okay. The, the weight of this bloody piece is so heavy, you know. So it's like wobbling everywhere. It's like it's, it's, they're trying to keep it in one position while you're playing. It's quite heavy. So I do apologise for it swaying about all over the bloody place. So they've just got the front done there, and I was trying to position it to show you a little bit. So it's actually drying pretty well, this stuff. It's, um, not too bad if it's just going on well and it's drying well. So it shouldn't take too long to get this one covered. Just do the back end, get that done. Slightly off camera, I do apologise. I say it's awkward to spray, but where the camera is, it's awkward to spray and make sure it's in shot as well. But the priority, even though it may sound bad, is for me to get the thing painted, you know. So I have to sacrifice camera angle at some point just to make sure the job's done properly. So just making sure I get into all these little nooks and crannies where the shapes and details make sure not even missed. Right there, it's starting to get a real nice, nice colour. It's got a lovely gloss to it. Just bit inside there, I don't know, I'll just cover up all the little test patches that I've done. Not that it matters, nobody's going to see it, but nice. just, just keep it all uniform, you know. That's a nice little colour colour change as well over there, eh? A couple of more layers on this, it should be fine to try and then let it harden for a while and then we'll go back to it and give it some more coats. Yeah, so far so good, it's starting to take shape, it's looking decent. So just, uh, Go off camera angle here, but I'll just start checking them. It's just slightly off angle again. I, I do apologise. I'm just checking out there. We just missed an over. I make sure everything's covered and there's no little spots anywhere I've missed. Now that I have cleaned the airbrush, it was spraying on absolutely lovely now. I was really pleased with it. some more forceps because they had the smallest couple of sets and they kept snapping so I um, treated myself to the bigger sets I'm just going to have a quick little check here that's what you just see I'm just looking everywhere in the nooks and crannies just checking it before I put it down to dry that it's all covered into shot now. So yeah, we'll just let that dry now and it's um we'll go again a couple of times but I'll do that off camera. I'll just give it a little, little close up just to show you it's, it's starting to take shape. It's actually looking quite nice. So we'll um, let that dry, I'll do the rest off camera and we'll start building it. So here we go. 
assembly time for the base. So I've done like the base in a gunmetal colour. I didn't bother showing that. I thought it was too long with all the spray and so I've just done that off camera. So we're going to get these axles sorted. So we start putting them in and getting them all lined up and all that, you know, get it done. So we'll get the spring in. It's a little bit fiddly, this, because you've got to, like, line everything up, as I say, and try and keep the spring in while the axles are only halfway in and then make sure we get round the pulley. So that's that one there. Just push it through a tiny bit to stop it falling out. We get the other end in. You've sort of got to get it round the pulley and then position it into place and put it in the little brush. So it's a little bit fiddly. It's not hard, it's just a little bit fiddly. But once it's in, it's fine. So that's sorry for covering it, but I'm just holding in the little central brush which is underneath the little black one. It's like the little bristles that spin underneath. I'm just making sure we get that in the little hole without scratching the paint and then fit the uh, the spring over the top of that one. On the back axles, I'm just going to slide that into place. And there you go. So that's the spring in. Just trying to make sure everything's lined up here, basically, is what I'm doing. Just gonna apply a little bit of pressure just to make sure it's sitting in nice. Just gonna give it a little bit of bit of a uh, persuasion, just a clip in. There we go. So as you can see there, as you twist the back axle there, it starts to spin the main brush around and then you put this little piece in that it's like a little cog that connects to that bristle. And then the, the motion of the bristle turn and turns the cog, which in turn turns the side brush. So we'll just get the two screws and we'll hold the side brush in place, keep everything together. Spread them to one side so we don't lose them. forgot to put this in. So that's what it sits on the bristle which turns the side brush. I was like eager to put it together, I forgot to put it on. So again, I'm just, just pushing it through just to make sure I've got it all right and there's enough space for it to sit in right. Tell you about the scratch in the paint as well. Come on, you little bugger. All still turning. Just double check it. Yep. There we go. We can put the little piece on there now. I so said there's like little grooves on the axles. That's why I was forcing on there. You push it onto the sprocket, so to speak, and it, and it grips the little wheel, you know. 
as I say, once, once they're on, they do hold really tight. That's that piece in. Just check it's around the, the pulley properly. And time for the wheels to go on. So again, these have got like the little teeth on the end of the axle, so I'm gonna have to like force them on. Well, not force them, just apply a bit of pressure. And a little squeeze. Nice little persuasion. And we'll use the correct tools actually. So let's get me small hammer. Just give it a little there, uh, little tap. Being careful not to hit me fingers. Also working fine. Let's give it a little bit more just to make sure. Should I put the front axle through now? Again, we just give it a little tap, a little bit of a persuasion. And the back wheel wasn't obviously persuaded enough because it just fell off. So we just knock this one back on it's typical that you get one side on you start the other side and then the other side rolls back off it's typical and that's how it all works as it spins around the, the spring pushes that pulley turns the brush and in turn turns the side brush so it's basically just the motion of when the kid plays with the toy, pushes it along, it mimics the real thing. So we will bring all the parts in now, all dried up and painted and what have you. So we start fitting it on. So we just put the like, there's like a little lip at the back. It just goes through the hole. It's like a hinge action. And that just clips on. And then when you put the cab on, the cab grabs the back end and it all, it all clips together. So I'm just going to quickly do the detail on the top. And all I'm using here is the, is the Sharpie metallic pens. You think you get a silver, a gold and a copper colour in the little set that you buy. And they're absolutely fantastic. They're not like chrome and they don't look cheap and too shiny. It's, it's proper like silver colour, like metal. So I think... It, for this type of model, it, it, it suits it. It doesn't need to be chrome, I don't feel. Like other people have different tastes, I get that. But my preference is just to use the silver on this time, rather than the uh, the Molotov pen. I said I was going to use the little tub of paint I've got as well, but I just thought it's the same colour as this. This does the job. It's going to be lacquered anyway, so, you know. It stays on. Once it's on, it doesn't come off.
So here we go, I'll just show, quickly show you. It covers it quite nice. Just make sure nothing's missed. Touch up. I say it's just a Sharpie. You know, it's a silver one. Pretty cheap for the set. So it's worth picking the set up if you can get them. We just sit that on the back now on the chassis. So we get the cab. And then we'll put the cab on the front and oh no, sorry, this the little um the little suction pipe. This just snaps into place, it just clips in a little hole on the top with the little lugs clips in that locks itself in pretty simple just click it into place there we go and then the side piece down there and we've got another little little piece for the side to go in another little brush with a set of wheels but they're not actually wheels. They are meant to be wheels on the real thing, but on this it's just like a, a vacuum-formed, moulded set of wheels that don't spin, but they're there, you know. That's like the the, the, um, the end of the hoover pipe that sucks up the rubbish. There you go, I'll just show you. So as it, you turn the wheels, it all spins and pushes the rubbish towards the hoover pipe. So we put the cab on now. So you got the doors and the glass and the interior. They all just fall into place. So it's pretty pointless showing you that. You you know how that goes together. So at this stage, I'm, I'm pet petrified of scratching the paint and anything catching it and chipping it. You know, this is the worst part for me. I get really anxious. So I, that's why I'm off camera just to touch. Just make sure it's all staying in place and. It's going to get the two, it's only two screws. Just make sure they're in properly. There we go. So there we have it, she's all in. Former glory now, she's nice and painted up, cleaned, detailed. So, let's remind ourselves of what we started with. Play one little truck, bit of chips, broken door, broken glass, and this is what we ended up with. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do to subscribe. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye for now. Stay safe.